As many of you may or may not know, I live in the state of California. Normally this state would be awesome, beautiful scenery, awesome beaches, cool tourism spots, and a sales tax higher than Lil Wayne. But today, it isn't all the same. Years upon years of record low rainfall combined with higher temperatures have scorched the state, vaporizing its water supply and leaving the people in a critical situation. Whether or not you believe that this is man-made climate change or just another freak occurrence, this drought is real and steps need to be taken to stop the Golden State from using up every drop of water. The question is, how and why is there a drought? The main reason is this ridiculously resilient ridge. Wait, that, 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 that's actually the name? Yes, the ridiculously resilient ridge is an area of high pressure in the northeast Pacific that pushes away all the tropical humidity up to the north and south. This stupid mass of air has been parked right in the same spot since December of 2012, and just like Chris Christie, there isn't a force strong enough to move it. These high pressure fronts have more power than an atomic bomb, so all we can do is wait it out until it gets smaller or disappears. On top of ravaging west side, it took some of its anger out on the east as well. All of this moisture is being blown past California and over to the Atlantic region, which is why you guys over in New York had all this snow that winter. And if you don't mind, could you guys, like, mail some of that snow over to us? I, I mean, it's not like you're, you're even using it. Never mind. Anyway, this ridge is leaving California drier than it's ever been and causing record lows in rainfall and snow. Also, with high temperatures in California, the little moisture that reaches us is mostly rain and not as much snow. Most of Cali's water comes from the snow melting in the spring, and it's a great backup source if rain isn't consistent. Also, snow is bright white, which reflects sunlight, keeping the ground nice and cool. With less snow, the ground gets hotter, making it harder for snow to fall, which makes the ground get hotter, which makes it harder for snow to fall. You know, get the picture? So how much water would it take to get us back to green lawns and full lakes? According to NASA, we would need 11 trillion gallons of water to end the drought. That's the amount of water that flows over Niagara Falls over 170 days. Our reservoirs are over halfway empty, and that's after the storms we got this winter. With a dry summer coming up, water levels will continue to lower into crisis levels. But don't worry guys, we got groundwater, you know? Water that drips through the soil. We got tons of that left, right? Hell no we don't! Farmers, who need to find some way to water their crops in the dry season, have been pumping water out of these caverns to quench their thirst. Thanks to our incompetent government, up until about a year ago, there was no regulations on our backup groundwater. Because of this, farmers have been freely draining these caverns whenever they need water, sometimes using these instead of surface water. Imagine you have a retirement fund, and then you take out money every week to go to Chipotle. You're full and happy at the time, but when you retire, you got nothing to fall back on. Right now, we only have about one year's worth of water left underground. Aside from doing rain dances and sacrificing lambs and volcanoes under a full moon while chanting Uptown Funk, which I definitely haven't tried, <coughs> conservation is our only hope for sustaining water. For those of you who live in drought-affected California, take small steps to help ensure that we don't run out of water completely. Yes, it seems scary, and it's a very possible situation if steps aren't taken. Take shorter showers, install water-efficient toilets, water your lawns only when necessary, or better yet, plant drought-resistant grass. When you water your lawns, do it in the evening so that the water doesn't just evaporate away. Wash the dishes only when the washer is full. Same goes for the dirty clothes. If your shower is heating up, put a bucket to collect the water and use that for your plants. Make sure all leaky faucets are fixed. Turn off the faucet when you brush your teeth or shave, and use a broom or a leaf blower when cleaning your driveway. Don't use your hose. On top of that, you'll get a lower water bill at the end. Win-win situation here. Finally, realize that water is not a right to anyone. It's a privilege. The will of nature determines whether or not we get water. But things are starting to look better for the future of California. That lazy-ass ridge is showing some signs of weakening, and it can't sit in the ocean forever, you know? Also, desalinization plants, the factories that turn seawater into drinking water, they've begun to pop up over the California coastline. They aren't the most cost effective, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Thanks for watching guys.